everybody. Jason Morris here, the director of the Go School of Real Estate located in North Carolina. Today, I'm with the one and only, the fabulous Miss Michelle DiGenova, one of our instructors Howdy. here at the Go School. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, JJ. Good to see hey, you. Glad always. to be here. Yes, I'm yeah, glad you're here because too. we have some important things to talk about. This, mm -hmm. uh, for our audience uh, information, this is another installment or another video in our series called Five Things, uh, which we typically are talking about the top five things you need to know about certain topics. Those topics come from our course mm -hmm. exams uh, that we see students missing most often. Now, we're not going to be um, talking specifically the course exam questions. We couldn't do that, could we, Michelle? We couldn't actually display the questions and talk. No, 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 no. But these are some really good insights into the concepts and topics of those questions, again, that are typically most often missed in the course exam. Uh, that being specific to the pre-licensing course, that is the first step in earning your North Carolina Real Estate Brokers license. Again, we teach that here at the Go School. Michelle actually teaches that, and boy, does she teach it well. So, Michelle, today's topic, as you already know, but for our audience, is five things you need to know about seller agency agreements. So we've had a previous video that talked and focused on buyer agency. Uh, so today we're talking the opposite, seller agency. We're working with sellers and we're talking about listing agreements and seller agency relationships. Um, and specifically for those of uh, those of you who are already current students, um, we are referencing uh, section eight of your course syllabus that's specifically uh, titled agency contracts and related practices. And then uh, accompanying that would be unit eight of your textbook, uh, which is called agency contracts. So again, for current students, we're talking about section eight and unit eight in your textbook. So. Michelle, let's jump right in with our top five okay. things that we need to know about seller agency agreements. Sounds I'd say good. the first one is let's make sure the audience understands that there are several types or several different versions of the agency agreements. Um, and notice, too, everyone, that I'm using the terms agreement uh, and perhaps contract interchangeably. And that's an important factor here. Uh, Michelle is great for teaching this to her students, that being the AKAs. You're going to always want right. to know what else or how else a term or a vocabulary word could yeah. be presented on an exam. So agency yeah. contracts might be referred to as listing agreements or an agency agreement or a seller's agreement. Right. All the same thing, right, Michelle? Yep, it's all on the seller's side. All on the exactly. seller's side. So it's still a contract. It's still a contract. Yeah, it is we a like contract. To refer to them. Yes, we like to refer them as agreements because they're oftentimes on the test questions, um, it will be easy to get tripped up between a contract for purchase, right? Offer to purchase and contract and an agency agreement. So we want to make sure you understand we're not talking offer to purchase and contract. But the agency yeah, that's that's exactly right, Michelle. That's why we pulled this one out as number one, uh, because, uh, again, like you're saying, the students get confused with purchase contracts and agency contracts. So sometimes for the majority, we'll use the term agreement, even though, like you're saying, it is still a contract. But we want you to differentiate between an agency relationship, an agency agreement and an agency contract and a uh, purchase contract, which we're not even talking about right now. Uh, that's right. a whole nother video, exactly. that's another section uh, yeah. in your syllabus. Right now we're talking about agency relationships. So when it comes to um, working with our seller clients, we have several different versions, again, of our listing agreements, our agency agreements for mm -hmm. sellers, right? Michelle, we got full service and then limited service, but really we teach and talk a lot about the full service listing agreements. And you see here on your screen, there are at least three of those. Um, Michelle, I want to break down some of the difference yep. between mm -hmm. these three, because again, yes. these what students get confused, especially those last right. two. So tell us a little right. bit about it. Yeah. Let's start, let's actually start at the bottom, shall we? With the okay. exclusive right. right to sell, because that's my favorite. Let's start with my favorite. That's my favorite too. And I'm, a, I'm assuming my it's every opinion. agent's favorite because it's the one you get oh, the yeah. benefit from, right? A absolutely. Let's be, let's be very clear about that. This is this is most bro most brokers' absolute favorite flavor 
of um, listing agreement. This is the one most of us will do, okay? Exclusive right to sell. Now, what that means is this agreement, by the way, who is this agreement with? Let's be clear about that. This agreement is with your seller client and your firm. You may call it my listing, but it is your firm's actual listing and you are representing your firm, you're taking the listing on behalf of your firm. Exclusive right, why is that so important? Because no matter who brings the buyer, if the seller's cousin Vinny wants to buy the house, great, you're still gonna get a commission, okay? That's important. You're not competing with the seller or anyone else. There's no competition. Like I like to tell my students, with exclusive right, you don't have to fight. You're gonna earn your commission. All that work you put in for that listing, exclusive right, you don't have to fight. You're going to get the commission. So that's my personal fave at everybody, every broker, in truth, every broker's personal fave. And by the way, you see that um, um, under hide annotation notes, you can um, hide that under, I think, the more button if you care to, Jason. That's annoying. Then we'll move our way up. We did one. Now let's go to two. Exclusive agency and you go well that doesn't sound so bad exclusive agency what's wrong with that hmm. think of the word agency as firm like in, in this case only because it rhymes with my little tip i like to give out i say exclusive firm you still have to squirm guess who you're competing with on this on this listing you're competing with the seller what yeah you mean I pay to get all the pictures and the signs and then and all the then staging and I'm competing with the seller? Yeah, that's what that means. So cousin Vinny comes along, right? The seller's cousin Vinny wants to buy. It's it's bye 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 broker. Hey, thanks a lot. You did a great job marketing my property. You didn't earn a commission. So sorry, because you took an exclusive agency, right? You're the only firm. So you're not competing with other firms with exclusive agency, right? But you're still competing with the seller. Okay, so, yeah, that's, so that's, that's, kind of uh, like, that's kind of like the seller saying, hey, you know, I, I want you to represent me. I want I want you to list my home. I want you to be my seller's agent. But right. I happen to know that my cousin Vinny <laughs> might want to buy the house. And, you know, if I convince him to buy it, do I owe you a commission? And the answer to that would be no. I mean, because again, you're kind of you're reserving that right to uh, kind of bring your own buyer. Um, and, right. and and so yeah, so then I would kind of be out yeah. of a commission if my seller did that. But See, hey. that's it's a choice that can be made. You don't have to make that choice, right? You get to choose which kind of uh, um, listing agreement you're going to take. And then lastly is the open listing open it sounds so freeing it's an open listing well <laughs> it's not it's not open in necessarily such a good way right, right. it's a little on the loosey-goosey side right it's a open listing means whoever has an open listing agreement with the seller can earn a commission so not only are you competing with the seller this time you're competing with potentially a bunch of other firms. Who wants one of those? Raise your hand. Brokers, right? Yeah, it's kind of like a race to the commission, right? Whoever finds the exactly. seller first. Yeah. Yes. So that's what an open listing looks like. You know, um, you're using your time, resources, and competing with a bunch of other firms and uh, the seller as well. Yeah. So um, exclusive right down at the bottom. Woohoo! Right, that's our fave exclusive right. You don't have to fight exclusive agency, aka exclusive firm. Still have to squirm competing, competing with the seller for cousin Vinny or who else may, they may bring. Competing with the seller, open listing. Boo! You're competing with everybody. By the by, open listings. They're competing with multiple firms. Competing with the seller. Open listings also do not go into the MLS. FYI, it's just another piece that you may see somewhere in your travels as you test. Okay, <laughs> so it's a little bit about, and again, these are full service, right? Full service agreements. So we do it all, right? One-stop shopping. So you're going to give a full service and in only one of those, you're not competing with anybody in that exclusive rights. Okay. 
So and then I, we have the lead. Yeah. Go ahead. So I'm just just to reiterate, I'm going to get paid a commission should I fully perform the um, terms of the agreement in an exclusive right to sell listing. I'm going to get paid no matter what. My firm and I are going to get paid, even if uh, the seller is the one that talked to the neighbor and the neighbor wants to buy the house. I still get paid Perfect. for that exclusive right to sell, or as you like to put it, mm -hmm. exclusive right. Don't have to fight. I like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick that up for my own. Uh, teaching. Uh, uh, thank you for teaching me yep. that. <laughs> uh, exclusive. Yeah, you the, again, I get paid if I am the one that brings the buyer, uh, but there is that opportunity that the seller again could bring the buyer. So if that's the case, I don't get my commission. And then, like you said, open mm -hmm. listing sounds great, but not so much uh, because that means the seller has contracted with us. They've contracted with the other brokerage around the corner. They've uh, contracted with the other brokerages down the street. And now it's a matter of whoever helps me first, whoever finds me a buyer first for my home, that's when I'll pay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's why. I wow, pay. indeed. We like the exclusive right to sell. Yeah. Um, and that also gives Absolutely. exclusivity to the seller as well. Yeah. Um, you were getting ready to make a, a, a brief mention about one of the other listing types that our students learn about and may see on a national question uh, when it comes to oh. examinations, but we don't have it on the screen here, but it's called a what? Net. Net listing. A net listing. What is that? A net listing. Who is a net? It's a net. What that means is, let's say, oh, you know, this uh, 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 sweet uh, little old lady says, oh, I could totally see my mother-in-law doing this. Oh, honey, I don't need much money. I I just need a few thousand dollars. Look, anything you can sell it for over forty thousand dollars, you keep it for yourself. You're gonna need that. Okay. <laughs> uh, Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, what? Look how much money I could make. Oh, that's called a net listing. You may go, yay, but right? Whose interest got put first here? Wait, hold on. Hold on. What about this fiduciary duty we have, right? Fiduciary duty to put our client's interest before our own. As one of my students said, um, our, our interest as a broker is tiny, T-I-N-Y. Their interests, not yours. Their interests, not yours, right? Mm -hmm. So did we put our client's interests before our own? Uh-uh. But the, but the lady told me that's what she wanted to do. That's, that's, that's on was, her. That's what she wanted to do, right? Yeah, she wanted it. But who's going to be the adult? Try that in front of the commission. See how that's going to apply, right? So, you know, our job is to put our clients first. Even if they said it's okay, that's not what we do. We don't take advantage of our clients. So net listings, you won't see them. Hopefully you'll never see one. They're, they are severely frowned upon in North Carolina. You may see it on the national, but that's what a net listing is, right? Anything over and above the broker takes. Whoa, that is definitely not putting the client's interest um, before our own. That to, to me rings as a form of self-dealing. Right. Um, letting them letting them walk you into taking advantage of them. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to say about that? No, that, you know, just to again, reiterate that that's why we're not like flashing it on the screen necessarily, because it's not one that is used here or should be used or is frowned upon if you use it in North Carolina due to our uh, agency relationship status and licensing mm -hmm. law in North Carolina. For but, sure. Know about it in case you see it on the exam. Now, the uh, other types of agreements, as you see here on the screen, are the limited service or uh, uh, sometimes called a flat fee service. Um, these are, again, um, limiting the services. As Michelle said earlier, above, those are all full service, as we call it. Um, we are uh, handling just about everything to do with the transaction. Uh, but when it comes to a limited service, again, in the in the title, our, our, our services are limited, meaning that it may be just a matter of you're contracting uh, with a with an agent to uh, put your home, list your home in MLS, and that's it. Uh, and they oh. may charge you a flat fee oh. for it, right? Yeah, that's great. Does that mean I don't have any duties to discover and disclose? <laughs> hey, man, yeah. I just I just put it in the MLS. Don't sure. Look at me, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, not going to happen, especially uh, because that person has to be licensed and follow all licensing law and rules from our okay. dear friends at the North Carolina Real Estate Commission. So it doesn't give them the kind of skirt around the rules 
privilege by any means, but they are simply saying, hey, if you don't need an agent to do the photography, to do the marketing, to do uh, the measurements and do all these other things and help me with the uh, legalese and documents and all that, you know, here, I'll charge you a certain flat fee or flat rate uh, to simply do, you know, the very minimum, like, again, listing right. it less, but um, so you'll see those out there in the real world. You may even work for one eventually, uh, but know that those yeah. are quite different from the full service uh, listing agreements. But still, all of these, as you see on your screen, part of the uh, types of seller agency contracts, aka mm -hmm. listing agreements. Know them well, right. be able to distinguish the differences among each of them. Those you'll certainly be tested on undoubtedly. All right, let's move into number two of our top five things you need to know about listing agreements. This one's an easy one, Michelle. I just want to make sure that our audience understands the parties to a listing agreement. And the reason for that is because, again, remember we said earlier that a lot of students notoriously get mixed up with, uh, get, get agency contracts mixed up with purchase contracts. And there are different parties involved, different people involved in each of those. And so you've got to really, again, make sure you understand and distinguish the differences between an agency contract or agreement and a purchase contract, which we're not even talking about once again today, that comes later. But the part Parties to a listing agreement, and Michelle, you even alluded to this earlier. Remember that the client, or no, also known as the principal, you may see a, the word principal listed in an exam question, mm -hmm. could be just simply the seller. The seller belongs to or is a client of the firm, the brokerage, right? Uh, and like Michelle said earlier, it may be you may uh, talk and, and market your listing, but really, again, you're simply a representative of your brokerage of your firm. Mm -hmm. And that client is a member of the firm, a party to the agreement that is with your firm. So keep that in mind. Unlike with purchase contracts, uh, the parties are the buyer and the seller has nothing to do with the firm. Uh, but that, again, is not what we're talking about here. So again, one easy point, easy exam point is to remember while you're reading the questions, who are the parties involved? And when it comes to the listing agency or even the buyer agency, as we discussed in a previous video, it's the firm, aka the brokerage and the client slash principal slash seller. All right. And so, that is explicitly stated on those agency agreements. Right. It's explicitly stated in the listing agreement. It's explicitly stated in the buyer's agency agreement, exclusive buyer's agency agreement. Absolutely. Remember that point. Who are the parties? Who are the people involved in these agreements? Okay. Number three. So here, similar to um, how we discussed in a previous video uh, on buyer agency agreements, we want to recap the required components of a listing agreement or a listing, or excuse me, an agency agreement. And they're, they're the same as the buyer agency agreements. Again, what are at a minimum uh, required components of an agency agreement with the exception of one. And that's the very first bullet point on your screen here. Uh, unlike buyer agency agreements, a listing agreement has to be in writing from the very beginning of the relationship. Um, so it, before you start taking on any tasks associated with listing and, and marketing that home for sale for the seller client, you have to have that writing. Uh, you have to have one of those um, listing agreements that Michelle just outlined for us back in number one. You have to have one of those in writing with your client before you can uh, move on. And then, you know, Absolutely. as we as we've reiterated with buyer's agency agreements, and as you see here, you have to have an expiration date. If you see at an exam question talking about a listing agreement and you see an answer choice that has the word auto renew in it, chances are it's not the right answer. Right, Michelle? <laughs> there is right. no auto renew. Right. And be careful. Watch this. When you see test questions, there's no auto renew, but there is an auto expire. Will it automatically expire? You betcha. Okay. Auto expire. Yes. Auto renew, never, never. Okay. Yeah. So that's a huge, easy point, mm -hmm. but a huge thing to remember. Again, a listing agreement has to have an expiration date. You can't just have an agreement with a seller client that says, I will list your home, sell your home, and this agreement is good for until I sell it. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> Don't we wish? I really wish we could do that, but right. no. Now, we can renew a listing agreement. Let's not confuse our audience and, and think have them think that you can't renew it. Uh, that is certainly possible. You certainly will want right. to renew an agreement that is up for expiration or that has already expired. But again, each agreement must have a, a, a start and end date, specifically an expiration mm -hmm. date. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just like the buyer agency agreements, uh, these are the same having the contain, uh, they contain the anti-discriminatory language as prescribed by rule in, clear, in a clear and conspicuous manner. So again, it can't That's be the right. print, but all agency okay. agreements, whether you're using the standard agreement that uh, is a privilege of uh, being a member of the Realtors Association, or you're using another attorney drafted agreement of your own, uh, whatever the case is, again, this is at a minimum must be included in the North Carolina agency agreements. And then yep. be signed by all parties. Again, Michelle, who are those parties? Who are the parties on the listing agreement, right? Don't just say the agent, right? It's which agent, excuse me, don't just say, uh, yeah, I was gonna say agent, but what I mean to say yeah. is who's gonna be a party? The listing agent, representing the firm, the firm and the seller, right? right? So there's the firm and the firm's representative, which is going to be the listing agent and the sellers, right? right? The and firm all that the listing sellers. agent is signing the listing agreement. Again, that's where sometimes people go wrong and think, oh, this is my client, right? This is This person is all mine, blah, blah, blah. No, remember the client belongs to the firm, but in a listing agreement, you are signing on behalf of the firm because you are going that's right. to and all agent right because yep. remember uh, we're all sub agents of the firm too but that's another story we'll we'll let that yeah, but yeah that good, good good reminder to to to, to our mm -hmm. audience that the sub agents we're all yeah. seller sub agents of the firm even if we're not the listing agent or if we're not the listing agent mm -hmm. I should say. Mm -hmm. and then finally as you see there that last bullet point your license number you've got to have your individual broker's license number sure um, so again, these are the minimum components of any agency agreement, whether you're using the standard form right. from the Realtors Association or an attorney drafted form. Now, there are several other provisions that you will have outlined on a listing agreement, like, of course, the proper sure. description, uh, the, the listing yep. price, of course, that's a big one, right? The, how much are we mm -hmm. agreeing upon selling your house for? Right. Right. Uh, the broker's mm -hmm. compensation, of course, is going to be outlined on uh, the listing agreement. We got to tell our seller client, "Hey, how are we expected to get paid, and how much?" Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The cooperation with and co compensation with other firms has to be outlined. Right. Um, the firm duties, of course, like with any contract, the duties are outlined yes. as these typical. Um, yes. These and other provisions, I want you guys to really refer to the actual um, listing agreement. So for uh, purposes of our uh, class and our students, we're going to send, uh, we're going to put into the comments below in the YouTube comments, a copy, a sample copy of one of those listing agreements that Michelle talked about. And that, again, is our favorite one called the exclusive right to sell yeah. the agreement. That's gotcha. the one I want you guys to learn from. So we'll include a sample mm -hmm. copy. That's a great learning tool. Again, you're going to yes. see at a minimum what is in uh, must be included in a listing agreement. And then, of course, it'll outline all of those other details of the listing. So look for yes. that in the comments. We'll have a link to <clears throat> sample copy. Next up, number four. This is what I call the Terminator question because <laughs> you, will, uh, you will undoubtedly see questions in your course exam and most likely in your uh, licensing exam when you go on to take that about um, identifying options of termination. <coughs> Excuse me. So in yes. this case, we're talking mm -hmm. about termination of agency, not a purchase mm -hmm. contract. Again, you have to make sure right. the question correct. Yes. Uh, are we talking about termination of agency contract or termination of a purchase contract? Make sure you're reading those details carefully right. in the questions because that's oh, where yes. folks go wrong. So we're talking about agency, of course. You see here on your screen, um, any of those particularly, Michelle, you want to highlight or emphasize in terms of ways of terminating an agency agreement? Sure. Uh, my very favorite happens to be the first one. Yeah. Of course, it's going to be your favorite <laughs> as so. well. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. We've accomplished our, our mission. We sold your property. Woohoo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we fulfilled the contract. The contract has been fulfilled and executed. It's over. 
the contract expires. You mind if I just run through these? No, quickly? go ahead. Uh, the, the contract expires. Oops. Talked right? about that. It's got to have an expiration Talked date. Talked about that. Got to ha yes, that's right. It has an expiration date. Um, it expires. One of, one of the main reasons contracts expire tends to be overpricing. So we want to be mindful of that. But expiration of the term, yep. Um, mutual agreement to terminate, right? This is something that uh, we decided we don't want to do now. And we can all agree. We See, this is the thing about contracts, really, right? They are yeah. agreements. You agree to come together. Why couldn't you both agree to come apart, right? right. Yeah, you know, this isn't working up. out. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. can break up. Exactly. You can break up with your client. We dated client a while. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. You just, <laughs> I've grown and you haven't. I just have to move on, right? It's not you. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not you, it's me, I'm sure. You'll make somebody a lovely seller, just not me, okay? <laughs> yes, you can agree to terminate, yeah. Breach of the party, what does that mean, breach? Uh-oh, we broke a promise. You broke a promise, because what is a contract? A set of promises, right? That agency agreement, still a contract. Remember, not offered a purchasing contract. We're talking about the agency agreement. Somebody broke their promise. Oops, you you were you're being discriminatory and you want to drag me. No, 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 no. I'm out. I'm out. I'm going to kick this one to the curb, baby. Right. Yeah. So you you broke your promise. I'm out. Destruction or condemnation of the property. Who wants to buy our pile of rubble? Right. Following a you know big storm or a fire or something. It's not it's not going to go over big. Okay. You're not going to get a lot of takers to um, purchase a destroyed property. Right. Death or incapacity of either party. Now, what do we mean by this one? Either party. Now, we have to be careful because we're talking about who are the parties to the con to the agency agreement, right? The parties to the agency agreement are the firm and the seller. Right. right? Now, if the seller dies, the seller, God forbid, right? Seller passes away. We've got an agency agreement with that seller, right? A listing agreement. Seller dies. Well, it's going to be pretty hard to make them sell that house, right? Get their signature on. No, no, right? So, death of the seller, right, can terminate, it will terminate the agency agreement. Be careful because when we talk about contracts, remember, death doesn't kill a contract, an offer to purchase contract. Death does terminate agency agreement. Death of whom? The seller. The listing we're talking about specifically listing agreement death of the seller but what about on the on the firm side death of the firm not death of an agent right check this out right agent passes away oh i mean it's very sad but let's face it hey bring up another agent come on <laughs> right? bring up another agent we got another one don't worry. you think you're uh you know uh what's the word expendable <laughs> no, not so much. You're replaceable. <laughs> You're replaceable. We got another agent. Send up another agent. We lost another one. No, I don't know what, right? But so if we have multiple brokers in the firm, we can we can use another broker, of course. But if the firm dies, how could the firm die? Oh, well, it's a one person firm. It's me and I died. Okay. The firm can't carry on, right? With that listing. So if the firm dies, okay. Or if the, if the firm uh, loses their license, right? Oh, license okay. As a firm yes. goes inactive. Um, That's right. So, you know, effectively dead. Death <laughs> yes. and status are what students notoriously get mixed up here. So, I'm so glad mm -hmm. you're emphasizing it to the extent you are because um, when it comes to a, a listing agreement, an agency agreement, if it says mm -hmm. something in the question about the death of the listing agent, and there's no mention of a sole proprietor, uh, like Michelle said, a one uh, one mm -hmm. agent firm, right. then that's not a reason to terminate a listing agreement. Cause, like mm -hmm. we're you know kind of haphazardly and, and foolishly sometimes describing, you're, you know, there's another agent, <laughs> there's another agent yeah. down the hallway uh, that can take over. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, right. You know, this you know doesn't happen knock on wood, right, Michelle? <laughs> this doesn't happen very uh, absolutely. often. Absolutely. But in terms absolutely. of questions, absolutely. you know, you've got to make sure uh, yeah. the incapacity or death of either party. And when I see the word party there, I have to remember the parties to an agency agreement, again, are the firm, as you so greatly mm -hmm. emphasize, the firm and the client. <laughs> and if the client dies, okay, we end the agreement. But if the 
<laughs> agent dies. And again, there's no mention of a sole proprietor agent or, or a one, one man show kind of thing. Then remember that is not sufficient uh, to terminate the agency agreement. We will assign someone else to it. Um, and same goes with the condemnation of the property or the destruction of the property. They get that one mixed up as well. This is for a listing agreement. Now, if the question were, can I terminate a buyer agency agreement because of the destruction of a property? The answer would be different, right? Good. Because right. the listing is talking about one property. We are listing and, and right. trying to sell one property. So if that property is destroyed for whatever reason, uh, let's say it burned down, then yeah, there, we have no longer anything to sell. But if a buyer is under a contract to purchase a home that was destroyed uh, while they're under contract, that doesn't mean that the agency agreement with the firm is terminated. Of course, it means right. that contract with the uh, purchase of that property would be uh, most right. likely in most cases terminated. But again, we're talking about terminating agency. And again, these are the, the right. distinguishing points that we want our students to make sure they get uh, when they're yes. least reading questions, answering uh, these things. Right. Are we talking about an agency agreement or are we talking about the purchase contract? Right, that's right. That's why reading very carefully and also thinking it through, like for instance, your example about, wait a minute, we're under the buyer's agent is under contract and the house um, burned down. Does that, that doesn't terminate the buyer agency agreement because what's that buyer going to do? They still need to buy a house, yeah. right? They're going to go buy another house. They're not going to buy, buy a pile of rubble, right? So we still have that agency agreement in place. Yeah. So again, and you... operation of law, go yeah. ahead. Well, yeah, just again, reiterating your point, reading carefully and no. Yeah. This is why we encourage mm -hmm. students to have the scrap paper during exams that they can say, okay, we're talking about a buyer here, or we're talking about a seller here, or we're talking about agency agreements being terminated, or we're talking about the purchase contract being terminated. Really make sure you understand which way to go because you'll see the answers for all of them. Um, and you just oh, yeah. sure you've choose the right one. But yeah, operation of law, you were getting ready to talk about. What's an example of that, Michelle? Uh, example of operation of law would be. Um, Eminent domain, eminent domain. Um, another example would be foreclosure. Mm -hmm. you can, can you can you list a property that's being foreclosed upon? Uh, no, you can't list it. Right. Right. I beg your pardon. <laughs> my my dog <laughs> says barky no. Action. <laughs> no, the clearly clearly your dog agrees with me. Good. Um, yeah. So uh, that would be an example. Uh, because you can't list a house that is going into foreclosure. Uh, you can't list a house that the, you know, the city of Raleigh is going to take uh, in uh, eminent domain. Condemnation is the process of eminent domain, by the way. Those are some examples. Any other examples you can think of? Those are the most AJ? common. Yeah, the foreclosure. Yeah. And, and, and mm -hmm. that's probably what you'll see in terms of test questions. But just know, again, these are uh, reasons for a termination of agency. And like Michelle said at the beginning of this, number one is that we have completed our mission. Our purpose has been accomplished and we have brought the buyer to the uh, to the listing and, and sold our client's home. So that's what we yes. achieve for. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. All right, let's finish out with number five of the top five All right. things. And this one oh, you want to talk about, it's like money. How do we get paid? When have we earned mm -hmm. our fee? And so you do mm -hmm. see a lot of exam questions pertaining to this topic. So Michelle, yeah. how have or when have mm. I earned my commission mm. as a listing agent? Boy. Now, the first one, it may seem like current real estate license on active status. Duh. But what does that really mean? It's super important, right? Like your license is current. What does that mean? It's current. How is it current? Because you renew your license every year. You've got to renew that license by June 30th. You're current because you paid your currency, right? You pay your currency to keep your license current, okay? That's what that's about, renewing your license. Your license is active. It's got to be active because if you're inactive, look at me, I'm inactive. What can you do? You can't do it. I can't even move my mouth. You're inactive. You cannot move. 
You can't do nothing. You can't advertise. You can't practice real estate. You cannot actively participate in real estate transactions. So you got to have both of those things in place. We're not going to dive down that rabbit hole. We'll talk about <laughs> that later, about Not all the ways you can go inactive, right? We'll save that for another time. Um, but the current and active are critical. Not If you're inactive, no money for you, right? Not even referral yeah. fees. You're inactive. You're inactive. You should be practicing. <laughs> That's right. Should you're inactive. Be- you can't hand out a business card. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, if you're not current, right? You are dead to the commission if you're not current. You're expired. The coins you should have paid the commission in currency, they put them on your little dead eyes for your wake, okay? You're dead. It's like you're being dead to the commission. That's it. You're done. So current and active, critical if you want to make some money. Valid listing agreement. I know it's another duh. But you remember, missed the most important word. You missed the most important word when you read that. Oh, valid? You said valid oh, listing agreement, but there's four words there. Oh, I didn't, I didn't read it. Look at me. I'm the one who's always Just saying, a reminder. RTFU. Just, it's a reminder. Remember, I didn't see it. It's different from buyer's agency uh, agreement, right? So uh, written. Yeah, look at you. Yeah. Underline that word. Written. Valid. Written Underline it like crazy. Agreement. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> without it in writing, what do you got? You got nothing. You got nothing. You got nothing. You do nothing. You do nothing to materially try to represent a seller until you have that puppy in writing. In writing. There is no such thing as oral listing agreement. It's not in our, not in our world. Absolutely not. Right. So yeah, valid retcon listing agreement. Right. So and Which then of course finally, can automatically like, expire. Yes. Yeah. We, we have to be the what? Is, what is the term that we use here in uh, this industry? We have to be the procuring cause right. of the sale, the procuring cause of the sale. And, and that means producing that ready, willing, and able buyer. Don't, don't get too hung up on that and thinking, well, isn't that just the buyer's agent who does that? Well, we both do it, don't we? The listing agent does it as well. Right, because the listing agent listed the property, which found the buyer's agent who brought the buyer. Right, so we're all in on the bringing the ready, willing, and able buyer. Okay, just FYI, there, the procuring cause of the sale. And I'll I'll tell them, I'll tell our audience a common Mm -hmm. example of when this comes into play is, and I shouldn't Mm -hmm. say common, but an easy example to remember is uh-huh. let's say that Michelle is my client. She wants me to list her home. I do that. I go through the marketing. We find the buyer mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and we um, have a contract uh, for uh, that's accepted by, um, by uh, Michelle, my client accepted by the buyer. We have a contract. We've got an agreed upon price. And then all of a sudden mm-hmm. my client, Michelle here, decides she doesn't want to move. She's got cold feet. She says, take them home off the market. It's like, well, not only are we taking the home off the market, but we actually are under contract here. So, and your seller says, and Michelle, this case says, it doesn't matter. Take it off the market. I'm not selling this house. Who was I to think that it was going to be sold? I should have sold this. This is my great, 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 great grandmother's home. I can't sell it. It, Whatever. Rut row. Rut row for sure, because now mm-hmm, we're not mm-hmm. going to closing. I just did all of this work for you, Michelle, and now you don't want to sell. Me. Sure, guilt me. <laughs> Do I still Look, get what? paid? Do I still get paid, Michelle? Are you still going to pay? Yes. Because did I do my job? Well, you did your job. I broke the contract and you did your job. I breached contract. I broke my promise, but you didn't break yours, right? You kept to the terms of the contract and you brought me a ready, willing, and able buyer and I backed out. Seller has cannot back out without a breach of contract, period, once they're under off the purchasing contract. There is no get out of jail free clause for the seller, unlike the buyer having their due diligence period. Uh-uh. No, it's due diligence for the buyer, not the seller. So did Jason earn his commission? Sure did. He sure did. He earned his commission. Getting my commission from you is going to be a whole other story. (laughs) That's right. But that's not that. Exactly. The question is. That won't be the testable. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Getting it actually in my hand is a whole other issue. 
But like you said, Michelle, that's not what's tested. What's tested is being able to identify when you as a licensed agent have oh. earned your commission. And in this case, yes. a listing commission. And that is, again, you were the procuring cause of the sale. Um, so you see here on the list, uh, this is kind of like a 5.1 uh, in a way, because we want to make sure our oh. students understand that they have earned a commission, even if uh, performance of the contract doesn't happen in certain cases, such as what, what yeah. we just described, you know, seller refused to close. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't run into the next one yet, and I hope I never do, but there are situations where sometimes the spouse, the other spouse, which has ownership rights in the property, they refuse to mm -hmm. sign they, either the contract or yeah. the deed, and therefore yeah. can't convey that property without that spouse's mm -hmm. yeah. signature. So, right. uh, does that mean that I'm not going to get paid now because of their doings? No, that means I have earned my commission. And I right. Get it. Yes, yeah. get it. Yes. So let that be a lesson to you. Beware of listing meetings when you ask about marriage and the, and the uh, seller says, well, it's complicated. <laughs> right? Be careful because complicated is still going to require two signatures. You know that phrase, you'll hear this often. It may just take one to buy, but it takes two to sell, two to sell, if, right? So you've got to get that other signature. Very disgruntled and angry. <laughs> mm -hmm. You still have yep. to get their approval. Um, mm -hmm. See here are some other uh, scenarios. Seller has a uh, has an uncorrected defect in the title. So uh, you know, again, that is not something that I did as my agent duties. That is something that the seller has to deal with. And if they decide not to deal with it or they can't deal with it, they can't convey the property. Does that mean I'm not getting paid? Well, I've earned my commission, so hopefully I will get paid. But again, right. the seller's the issue there. Uh, and the, the operative word is earned. earned he's, he's still right. earned under all these conditions. He's still earned a contract. Uh, excuse me, earned a commission, <laughs> earned it. Uh, how you can get it, that's another story. That's not the testable part. He's yeah. earned it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, seller's unable to deliver possession within a reasonable time. Um, so we've seen, uh, as of recent, really, some situations where sellers will continue to stay in the home beyond the uh, closing oh. date, perhaps with yes. an agreement with the buyer, right? Uh, but then they continue yeah. to stay. Um, and until that closes, I don't get a commission. I haven't earned a commission necessarily. Uh, and, and, and if that's mm. the case due to the seller uh, not being able to deliver mm. position, possession for their craziness, um, I, again, still have earned my money. Right. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Um, if the seller insists on sales terms and conditions not stated in the listing contract, uh, that's another way of saying, but this is this is what we agreed upon, and now you're saying that mm -hmm. you want to change those, um, right? I have that's right. What we I had performed those terms and conditions that we originally stated and signed, but now you're trying to to change them up. Uh, um, yeah. Is that because you don't want to do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've still earned my uh, commission, and then finally, buyer and seller conspire. Wow, I hate that word conspire. But uh, oh, no. it has been known to happen, buyer and seller conspiring after the sales contract has been signed, yeah. uh, that they'll agree to cancel the contract. You know, hey, again, if you guys want to do that, have at it. But I've still earned my commission. And you can believe right. I will be pursuing right. uh, the payment yes. of that commission in that particular. That's case. right. <laughs> and there's a protection clause that you'll see when you read the um exclusive right to sell listing agreement that speaks to that very thing like you can try to conspire but there's a protection period for me and my commission because i was again the procuring cause of that sale and you tried to go behind my back right. not gonna happen right we're not gonna let that happen okay. no they don't know us do they <laughs> all right so that rounds out our five yeah. things that you need to know about seller agency agreements Again, watch this, rewatch this. These are at a minimum the things that you should know about seller agency agreements. Uh, again, these are pulled from uh, areas uh, that we notice students having many 
uh, troubles with in terms of examinations. Um, so hopefully this has been some great insight for you guys. Thanks again for joining us. Michelle, you've been mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you for Thanks, Jason. This video with me and giving us your insight. Please, if you're gotcha. out there, you're not a current student of ours and you'd like to jump in one of our classes, particularly Michelle's, you see just how... Uh, passionate she is and animated and interesting <laughs> and knowledgeable. She uh, is going to lead the way with your pre-licensing journey. Um, check us out. GoSchool.biz is yep. our website. Feel free to reach out to us about questions on today's video or anything uh, pertaining to the real estate licensing journey. The best contact method for us is email. It's simply info at goschool.biz. Again, our email address. We'll hope to see you guys again for our next five things yeah. video. And Michelle, absolutely we'll you again as well. So uh, absolutely. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Absolutely. If you're on Michelle, YouTube. We'll see you next time. Absolutely. See you. Thanks again. Bye.